Andy Parker, welcome to number nine of Totally Terrific Tag Then Trimming. And this time we're going to be making gift bags. And I thought it'd be fun if we could texture paste one and then uh, put some other little decal -y type things on it. But we're going to be using some Martha Stewart stucco effect. I like that stuff. I think it works good. And I put some real red re in it and it is really red. And I taped it down, I taped my uh, stencil down to my um, paper bag, and I'm hoping that the it's one of those stencils that's cardboard, and I'm not exactly sure how well it's going to work or if it's going to seep underneath. I've never used one of these, so uh, I'll be able to tell you if it's... Um, if it's worth buying or if it's a fail. And I did tape it down, as I said, but you just never know with uh, when you're dealing with something that's... I really like the ones that are um, more durable. I have the brass ones. I really like the brass ones. And I also really like the plastic ones because they're, like I said, it's not just durable, but you don't have to worry about things getting underneath them so much as you do, I think, with uh, these cardboardy ones. But, uh, you know, I've heard good things about these, and I'm not ruling them out because I want to try them and see how it goes for us. The one thing I've noticed so far is it seems like the... the um, paste is um, almost sinking into the paper, which is weird because I've never had to do that before, and it, it, it seems like it's um, almost, um, I guess I, I'll, I'll, I'll describe it as, it's almost like it's uh, staining it versus um, a, a, adhering, I don't know, that's, that's how I'm going to explain it. It doesn't seem like um, what it normally seems like when you put it down on on um, surfaces and I'm hoping that is not an indicator that it's not going to be a success because I thought this would be really a fun technique to make a gift bag that was really almost like a almost like a keepsake you know what I mean like uh, you're gonna somebody's gonna get this and be so um, blown away that you took the time to stencil well emboss on it stucco it. I just love stucco. I just love all of this texture stuff. I think it's the coolest stuff. And I also think the thing that's the neatest about it is that it's so, uh, you can do so many things with it. You know, you can just play with it to your heart's content and come up with so many cool ideas. And, um, it, you know, it's like the sky's the limit when it comes to this stuff. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but right in there is what I'm talking about, the, um, the way that it seems like it's staining the paper versus um, sitting on top of it. It just seems like it's not, it doesn't seem like it's doing what normally this stuff does. I can't explain it any better than that. It seems like it's almost, um, almost um, sinking into the paper. That's the only way I can describe it. It's weird. It's not at all how it reacts to other paper. Now, I know that um, these cardboard stencils are not supposed to be used over and over again, but I have heard that other people um, have been able to use them over again. This is the moment of truth. Oh, wow, so far. So far, it's pretty darn nifty. And it did exactly what I thought it would in places. It did seep under, but look how cool that is. I mean, that's some cool stuff. When you can get a bag with that kind of texture on it, I do hope you can see that. I'm going to play, I'm going to, maybe I can even wipe that off. I am going to play with it a little bit more. Woo, don't want to get that on there. Um, I am going to play with it a little bit more, and I think I'm going to uh, quickly make up another batch of this, but maybe this time we'll just go with uh, the, the, maybe I'll go with green. Wouldn't that be fun? Remember, when you work with these kind of things, you absolutely have to be really fast about cleaning your surfaces off. I am going to do um, 
the Lindsay the Frugal Craft or used uh, some other kind of like I'm not sure if it was caulking or what it was but she did do something with I think it was caulking and I am going to try that and we'll do a video of of that mess because <laughs> you know if I do it it's not going to be like somebody who's uh, artistically uh, inclined and knows what they're doing it's going to be um, half scary I hope you can see that that's all I did. I added maybe two or three drops, three or four drops of reinker, and then you have to make sure that if you have it, like that part that's on my knife, you want to make sure that everything is completely blended in so that your um, you have a consistency in your color. Then let's see. We're going to do that where I'm going to put a line in the middle and what I'm going to do with that what we'll do with that is we will put um, a ribbon in the middle of it doesn't that just sound pretty anytime you use the word ribbon you get my attention right I just love ribbon no shocking to you isn't it I do love ribbon okay here's let's hope cardboard piece number two works if it doesn't, like I said, then you'll never see this video anyway. And, you know, like I said, I know you're only supposed to really use them once and then they're trash, but I I have seen, heard and seen people use them more than once. And it would be great if this would work for the entire side of the bag. I'm not going to do both sides of the bag because the point of this is that we are going to have it facing out you know like um uh, you know when you a lot of times when you get gift bags they have a pattern on one side and then the back is kind of just bland or you know not much on it that's kind of the look we're going to go for we'll put like instead of doing a to and from label i think i'm going to do the to and from on the back of the actual woo, of the actual bag and then that way um we will only stencil this part of it. There are a couple spots here that don't really have as much paste in them as I want them to, but what are you going to do? Yikes. So I'm going to pick it up and get it out of that, uh, we'll call it, big area of texture paste. I did put the stencil in the trash. I think that its work is done, but I am going to let it dry. I'm going to put a bow right there in the middle of it. I think it's going to be cute, and uh, you'll see uh, when I do the next step. After this dries, we'll go on to the next step, but I think it's going to look cute. I'll put something in the middle that uh, detracts from any of the big boo-boos and we'll put something in that section where we do have a serious problem and I did do another bag and I'm gonna work on one of these two so we are gonna do more with another bag and this one is going to be with emb embossing powders and uh, some other details but I'm gonna do the back of this one on video for you once this dries we're gonna do both of these in a video gift bags I have this one in progress as you know that one is dried now we'll be able to continue we did this one that has the um, embossed uh, images on it and we'll continue this is my first love of gelatos gelatos and I have had a very let's just say hate relationship up to this point but I read something on or watched something on the internet that turned it all around for me they said this they said you know what the greatest blending tool is and the best tool for gelatos and I was like tell me and the answer is your finger and if anybody knows me they know that I am a third grader at most at heart and anything that to do with getting dirty and getting my fingers in it is right up my alley so I went back to we'll call it the drawing board as it, as it were with gelatos 
and I started playing with them with my finger. This is the same stencil with just playing with them for that amount of time, just long enough to, you see what I'm doing, I'm just rubbing the, the gelato across, and some of these are called play colors, instant edu, they're, they're the little kids formula. I did not find any significant difference in anything other than it seems like the child's formula seems to dry faster. But as far as blendability and um, the overall movement with my finger on it, um, I find no difference between the, the uh, children's formula and the regular gelatos and, uh, oh, and the price. The other thing that's cool about it, and um, well, I could do it with this color. The other thing I thought was really fun about it was, uh, this one hasn't been opened yet, was that I could run two colors across and kind of make it a blended color on the edges if I wanted to, and it didn't change the overall look of the original color, but gave it more blending. You know what I mean? I, I can't explain that any better than that. You know how I just, uh, I don't have a way with words, I guess. Then I took this blue color, ran it across, and it became a very bold. And then after I rubbed it in, which I'll do really quick, I put on this um, pearlized version of the real gelatas. And I rubbed the two together, and I got this really neat pearlized look. Now, I will tell you this. I'm using a stencil that's got pretty big openings and don't try it with a stencil that has smaller openings because the places that I do have small openings I can't get my finger in there maybe you can get your finger in there but you know um, since my audience are, are primarily people like me I'll just forewarn you that it's, it's trickier to get it in there before I go any further let me tell you that this is called the mini harlequin um, stencil by Crafters Workshop, designs by Jamie. It's a 6x6. Six six. And here's the other cool thing about it. After I played with it and did a couple rows, it stuck down by itself. So I didn't even have to really work at keeping it in place, which is neat. And um, I love that part. I didn't have to work at it. So the people that are struggle with only being able to use one arm or one hand in their crafting, you probably would be able to do this with... Uh, taping it down originally and then afterwards just go for it. I'm going to use this cool purpley color that I haven't used yet at all on the very bottom. Anyway, I I have a new love. My friend Linda told me I would love gelatos if I played with them and she said something about with my finger and I and I don't think I really understood that. Ooh, got a little got a little color mix here. This is a rainbow this row. Okay. Anyway, I don't think I really heard her as much as I needed to until today, and I'm going to take this off, and you can see how much fun that is, and what did that take me, maybe 10 minutes, and the other thing that was cool about it is I really don't have that much gelato on me, so that is our gelato uh, gift bag. I don't think I'm going to do anything more on that. I was going to try doing like a doily on it, but then I thought it's really cool the way it is. And I am not going to do the backs of my bags because my intention with my bags, and uh, I'll do it with one of these ones that are dry, my intention is that I'm going to fold it over and then either put a color coordinated uh, clothespin on it or cover a clothespin with material. I'll give you an example. Here's just a regular red one that I could do, or I could put um, some designer paper or, and this is more my style as you know, a ribbon. So why don't we finish that one up, we'll do a little ribbon on it, and then we'll be done with that one. The way I'm going to do my ribbons is I'm going to put a, a dot of uh, one of the glue dots behind it. Put glue dots. I'll put one right there, and I'm going to be sorry if my head's in the way. I know my big noggin's always in the way. I'll put that one there, and then... Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get a ribbon, and I'm going to tie it around from the back, and then I'm going to do that with one side. And I'm going to take it off camera to do the bow. Sorry. You know how hard it is for me to do bows. I don't want my bows to come off looking, you know, like a third grader made them even though they sometimes do. Okay, 
we're going to go with this one for now, even though it would look better if it was upside down. That's, that's my idea, and I, I probably would do something more, or maybe I would turn it sideways. I don't know, but that's my initial idea about what to do with those. Oh, back to our uh, gelatos. I am going to soak this thing in water because I think it's going to be problematic if I don't. Okay, we're going to go for this ribbon. It's very orange, and how we're, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in the center, and I'm going to make it look like um, we did the bow or the knot on the package when really we're going to do it off the package. I'm just going to tie this ribbon into a fairly decent sized knot because our goal here is that it looks like our knot was there, well we did our knot on the package and of course we didn't. And then I know you you ribbon lovers are just about ready to have a heart attack because I am going to do something horrible, but um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use glue dots, and I'm going to glue this down. I think I'm going to do it off to the side a little bit, like right there, and then I'm going to cut the extra off. That's the part I knew would make some of you go, oh, no, don't cut that off, but unfortunately, I, I don't have an alternative, I don't think. The secret to making glue dots is there's a product called Aileen's Tack It Over and Over. It's from that company that Aileen's that makes tacky glue. You can find it in a lot of craft stores. I always find it in Joann's. And Joann's usually doesn't put it on sale, which is weird, but they always have that coupon so you can get it on sale. But anyway, it's um, called Aileen's Tack It Over and Over. Keep your, if you have, your um, a package of your glue dots. If you have a package of it, keep that paper, that this long paper that you use it on, because what you're going to do with it is you're going to take this big long stretch and you're going to run little dollops of glue back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the whole length of it, and then you've got a whole new container, basically, of glue dots. So I would seriously recommend you doing that. I heard that from a Stampin' Up! lady from Connecticut. And she was very nice explaining it to me and said that I should try it. And I did. And I couldn't believe how it's just like them. Then I just heard this scoop from a YouTube channel. And I don't remember what YouTube channel it was. I apologize, whoever you are and whatever whoever gave this scoop out, but she said, it was a lady, she said if you want to do um, glossy accents and um, do them really inexpensively, all you have to do is buy a, a product called Fabritac and another Aileen's product, she says will do it, and it's weirdly enough, somebody gave me a bottle of this and I didn't know what I was supposed to do with it because I don't do anything with fabric. Again, we'll talk about that story some other time. It's called Fabric Fusion by Aileen's. Anyway, she said, although this is yellow, or yellowish, it dries clear, and she said that it also makes what looks exactly like glossy accents. So, for you glossy accents girls, you know how expensive glossy accents is. There's your secret to cheap, cheaper, cheap, very cheap. According to this woman, it's significantly cheaper. And I thought, well, geez, if it's significantly cheaper, I'm going to have to spread the word on that because you know I love anything that's a bargain. And um, she said that you can't tell the difference between it and glossy accents. I'm going to put my ribbon, I'm going to angle it a little, put another dot under it, and put a little dot on the other side under it. Also, going to do a little bit of lifting it up. So that is our second gift bag complete. I think it looks pretty cool. And I'm um, again, I'm sorry about the ribbon, but I really thought um, this the ri I tried some other ribbon, but it didn't really it didn't really do it for me. And I like this ribbon and I think um, the bag is kind of distressed looking and I like the kind of um, childlike quality of the ribbon. 
and the ribbon does need trimmed a little bit. After I had my little glue dot incident, it decided to fray a little bit. And um, oh, I think that's what somebody gave me that fabric tag for. They said it'd be good for for uh, doing you know when my ribbon does this. So the next one we're going to do, I think we're going to do a monogram, and it's going to be a very simple monogram. We're just going to go across the center of the bag with our monogram. Hopefully. We're going to fold our paper just a little bit on the top, our paper bag. Then you're going to fold both of them over. You could put a glue dot on there if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And then you're going to put your little paper clip. You know, for me, pulling the paper clip back is sometimes the trickiest part. Ugh. Had to make that noise for you, too. Ugh. There you go. And there you have what is a cute little monogrammed baggie. Okay. Is we're going to do one that we are going to emboss. And also, we're going to use color pastels, soft pastels, chalks, whatever you want to call them. I call them chalks most of the time. And um, you want to really get your Versamark ink. Versamark is what you use to stamp when you're going to be embossing, heat embossing, because it uh, is real sticky and it holds on to the... Um, the embossing powder really really well and we want to make sure that we really get a good imprints and you probably can't see the imprints of what I'm doing but I can which really isn't that all that matters <laughs> no, but um, it does matter because we want to be able to see the math effect that one was stuck to it funny enough there's a glue dot on the back of that you wonder how a glue dot got there I don't know but it is attached secure and I think for good Put that one right there I really like these stamps. They're all from different manufacturers. Uh, this one is a Stampin' Up! one called, um, no, this one's a Stampendous one, and it's called Fresh Bloom. This one is Hero Arts, doesn't have a name. This one is Hero Arts. So basically, uh, they're all different brands, and I'm pretty sure that you should be able to find all of them if you're looking for them. You should, they should still be available, hopefully. That's my dream for you. I'm going to put one more over here. Whoa! And we're going to put a little bit of that ink pad there, too. Okay. So now, after we've done that, and that you do not need to clean right away because the uh, embossing ink is really kind of good for your stamps. You want to wash them you know, eventually, but it's not like the inks that are going to really be a problem. You're going to put a piece of paper underneath your image that you're going to put embossing on. You want to, I didn't remember to do this, but you normally will run a, an embossing buddy over this, which is a little pack that's full of either baby powder or cornstarch, or you can buy, you know, the commercial formulas, but I, mine, I think I have cornstarch in, and it stops the, the fingerprints and the things that would normally hold on to any uh, stray um, powder. It would get rid of any of the strays. But what we're going to do, because I also have a, a high-tech formula, I'm going to do this and blow on it because, you know, I am the queen of coming up with a plan. When in doubt, if it doesn't work to blow on it and it still looks bad, you might as well just throw it out. But it looks good enough. Then you're going to put your, your powders back into the bottle that they came out of. And the most important part, at least in anything I do, is put the lid back on it before you spill it everywhere. Because you know I will. You want to heat your tool up. Your, I have a dairy story. I never know if that's dairy or dairy. I'm going to look that up. Heat tool. I, you want to heat it up just a little bit before you do your embossing. And then you know it's done when it changes from uh, almost invisible to shiny. And you can see that, that flower, hopefully. 
you can tell that it's done. You want to move your tool around because this is putting out some really, really high heat and you don't want to burn yourself. So please don't let your kids do this and don't do it near um, anybody that's going to get in the way of the heat gun and get burned. And don't touch it near the, if you have to get anywhere near it with your hand, use tweezers so that you don't burn yourself. If you're going to do this with one hand, you can see I'm not even touching this because the weight of the paper bag is holding it in place. But I wanted to make sure I gave you all of those tips and tricks because I don't want anybody to get hurt with one of my projects. So now I hope you can see that uh, the bag did mess up a little bit of my design, but it's not that big of a deal. What I found when I practiced was the uh, the uh, chalks come off pretty easily after the fact. So if I have chalk that I've gotten somewhere that I didn't want it, it's pretty easy to get it back off. I'm going to use my fingers to put some of these colors down and then I'm going to rub them in and I'm trying to stay within my flower. It comes off, the whole process seems to come off with a really um, I'll call it pastel -y, just really, I thought it was really elegant looking. I know that's kind of a weird thing to associate with chalk, but I did think it looked really elegant when I was done with it. I don't know why, but I did think that. And I played with a bunch of different combinations of colors when I did it before, and it didn't matter what combination I came up with, they all seemed to look good. I am using Reeves soft pastel 12 artist colors that I got at a garage sale for 50 cents. Made me happy when the lady said, oh, do you think 50 cents is too much? And I was like, no, because I had no idea how much they cost in the store, but I knew it was more than 50 cents, and I was really happy to play with. I love anything new to play with when it comes to art products, so I was thrilled to get them. And she was thrilled to get rid of them because she said she bought them for her daughter, and her daughter never used them. And I said, great, hand them over. Here's the money. Made my day. I was just telling one of my friends that um, I love going to garage sales in the hopes of finding art products because you never know. I went to one sale where there was a woman whose daughter went to art school and she had one of those portfolios that you put your art finished art products or in process art products in and I mean obviously I have no use for it but I thought it was the coolest thing so I bought it and then when I opened it it had all kinds of scrap looking stuff in it so I I mean I bought it just because I thought it was you know a, a neat thing and then to find out it had all kinds of tools and tricks in it, I was really happy it had um uh color charts and uh different papers and different um it had a bunch of T-squares, the huge ones that you would use when you're doing big art projects that made me really happy. It was really cool. It was a cool find. And then um, the other, my other big find, I think I've talked about this, was I went to a lady's house that she had, um, she had been an art, or no, not art, she had been a French teacher and she had all kinds of books in French and I thought wouldn't it be cool for background on things is to have something that's in French it, you know on cards I thought that would be really neat so um, she did have some children's books in French and um, I snapped those up because I thought that would be even neater on the back of a you know or on the on the background of a little kid's stamp and you can see how this is coming off around the flower, which I think is neat. I just love anything new and different when it comes to art. And I know virtually nothing about art, but I love it. And I love, well, I guess I won't say art. I love crafts. I just think it's such a neat thing. When I was a kid, I did ceramics. And um, so every year, my grandmother was so sweet. Every year, she was so gracious about the things I would make her. And I uh, made her this um, huge sitting cat. It was a white cat. Grandma didn't have any white cats. But uh, when she died, 
she was adamant that somebody would take care of that cat and my mother then kept it until her death and I think I think we ended up burying it with my mother because she also really loved it or else my sister has it I don't know one or the other um, and um, it was it was really neat that my grandmother loved it that that much and that was the first big thing I made her so then after that every year of course my mother would be like you're gonna have to make grandma something that's gonna make her happy like the cat so then I made her a deer uh, that had its fawn that was you know these things were big they were like I don't know, 18 inches. They're not little. They were not little things. And then I made her this ugly, huge, ugly frog, and uh, she was very gracious about it. But that frog was really ugly. And then I made her some other ugly thing. But she was always very sweet about it. And my mother kept some of those things because um, she, she and my sister are really funny. I took pottery in college, and I made a lot of pottery. And I love pottery. Love, I mean, that was the greatest class because it was my senior year, and um, I, I was really nervous about the whole idea of graduating. And I was, you know, the whole the whole process of uh, if you're a senior in college, you know what I'm talking about. You you just are even even though you know what you're doing, the whole idea of what's waiting for you on the outside world is scary. So this pottery class was in the last semester of my senior year, and I spent uh, pretty much my whole semester in the pottery room making pottery, and that, honestly, I think it saved my sanity because I was really, I was really scared about uh, the real world, and any student that tells you they're not is kidding, I believe. And so um, I had a ton of pottery. So then about a year and a half later is when I got arthritis. And so my sister uh, started thinking about the things that I would never be able to do again. And so anything art related, if, if it was art related and I made it, my sister wanted it because she said I would never be able to do any of this stuff again and she wanted to make sure that, that, you know, that they were maintained for prosperity or whatever. Prosperity, prosperity, whatever the word is. Anyway, um, she wanted to make sure that, that they were maintained, which I thought was really, really sweet of her. And um, now... She's collecting a lot of greeting cards and a lot of, of these kind of things. I'm going to try and see if I can rub a little bit of yellow into the background and see what that does and see if it makes it a little bit frisky in the background. Um, I like this process, and if you like getting dirty, I recommend doing this. I like getting dirty. I don't care that I've got chalk up to my elbows. I think it's fun. And like I said, I think it looks, I mean, I'm not saying elegant like black tie elegant, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that looks necessarily like what it is. So with that, that is going to be our last bag for this time. I have a lot of ideas of bags that we could be doing, but I think that uh, this seven or eight hours that we've spent together is probably plenty for anybody. Let me show you the bags that we've made. This was the one that we made just now with our pastels and with our um, embossing powder and our embossing tool. So it's heat embossed. This is our monogram. Look at that <laughs> chalk on me. This is our monogram where we used the Tim Holtz Distress Ink called I'm pretty sure that's mowed lawn on our bag on our doily and that was just a simple paper doily that I bought and this little uh, um, paper clip was uh, I think it's from Stampin Up I'm not sure I don't remember I'm, it's one of those things you have in your stash then the end is from ink, the end is from Inka Dinka Do it's a line of I just bought it at Michaels of uh, letters and I think it's like artists or something I I don't know I'll put that in the comments below once I find the baggie. Then this one is uh, finger painting in gelatos. Really thought that was fun. Then this is the one that we did where we took the uh, texture paste. And the texture paste, again, I colored with real red. Real red. That is not red. It's orange. And last, and I'll put these a little closer to each other. 
And then last but not least was our, this was also uh, embossed with a glittery red emboss and um, the ribbon is a Stampin' Up! red ribbon with white stitching and that's our collection of baggies for right now and I hope you like that tutorial and I hope Ritz can get it down to uh, not two or three hours and I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and I hope you'll try some of those techniques because I think they are a lot of fun obviously my bow needs a little bit of work but thanks again for watching and please give it a thumbs up there's the thumb there's some dirt and uh, subscribe and thanks again for watching bye bye <laughs>